your job is your ministry your job is your offering to god and there are people who are saying it and we know our job that we are putting it so don't do half hearted job view it as your ministry view it as your offering view that god is with you and you're working for god and that will give you an entirely different perspective Are you looking forward on for Monday or are you looking forward for Friday? Well, I am titled today's message How to be efficient at work. You see many people have a very poor attitude of about work. They dread Mondays and wait for Fridays. Do you know that God is interested in your career? God is very much interested in what you do 8 hours a day in your workplace. And the Bible gives us great insights about our work life i heard a joke like this it is just a joke but to drive in some principles once three people a boss and his two employees were walking out after lunch the 15 minutes they had and one of the employees trampled upon a a a, a, a cylindrical brass uh, item which rolled and then he picked it up it was an old item and he cleaned it with the tissue that he had and all of a sudden a genie came out oh thank you so much for rescuing me i have been caught up in this place for so many years and you have any wish we will grant your wish so the first employee said i wish to be living in a cottage in the beaches of thailand and enjoy my life and off that man is gone to thailand the next second person said i wish to live in one of the best cities of the world i wish to live in paris in one of the top apartments where i can see everything and in a moment of time he is gone to paris and then next was the boss was to ask the genie what he needed he said i need to get back to work i want both my colleagues to get back to work in 15 minutes and here they are back to work you see work is a commandment of god Work is God's command Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it So when we work we are fulfilling God's commandment for man Exodus chapter 20 verse 9 6 days you shall labor and do all your work not incomplete work all your work we need to finish for that week in 6 days Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28 Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer but must work So if there is any person who is lazy sitting at home not working and giving excuses start to work That's what the Bible says 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 11 to 12 Work with your hands just as we told you So that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders And so that you will not be dependent on anybody 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10 The one who is unwilling to work shall not eat Man went to his boss and he said I want an increase in my salary Let's negotiate about it Because three companies are after me The boss needed him very badly And the boss negotiated with him And the boss said Okay, finally they negotiated And they came to a 5% agreement, increment from his work And the boss finally said which are the three companies that are after you? SBI loan company, my electric company and my internet. I have not paid the bills. So I need this money to pay the bills. You see, we need money to work. And the number one thing we work is we get money. Work gives us money. Proverbs chapter 10 and it's verse 14. Lazy hands makes for, make for poverty. But diligent hands bring wealth. Money is one of the primary things that we get out of work. But all that you are doing your work is if it is for money, I feel it is a very short-sighted view of work. Because money should not be the only focus that you and I go to work. Think about it. 
you work for the next 20 to 60 years depending on your age, 8 hours a day and you are spending so much of your time, your energy, your talents on work and all that you get out of your work is money, I feel it is not justified. It's a very short-sighted view of want, what you want out of work. But there are many things the Bible says when God wants us to work, there are many other things that we derive other than money from our work that God has given to us. Secondly, work brings prosperity. Now, if you really want to prosper, you need to work. Come with me to Proverbs chapter 28 verse 19. Those who work their land will have abundant food. You know, when we work for this world, uh, sometimes we may have from hand to mouth. But God's principle is that when you put your hands into hard work and work as per the principles of God, it is God who gives you prosperity. I'm teaching about prosperity this morning time. You want to be prosperous, you work hard. And when you work hard, it is God who makes you prosperity. And prosperity is something other than money. It is riches, comfort, Plenty, welfare, a good life, abundant life that comes out of work. And it doesn't happen if you don't work. Pastor, I have a small salary. How can I have, be, how have prosperity? Prosperity is not based on your salary. When God sees your hard work, God decides to prosper you. And if God decides to prosper you, no, less, no matter what less your salary is, prosperity comes from God and you will receive it and you will enjoy it. And that's the testimony of my life. Work brings prosperity. Then, work develops our God-given skills. God has given us a lot of skills. You see, when it came to the building of the temple of God, the lot of skill labor worked in the, in the temple, the Solomon's temple. When it came, you go and read about the skill labor and how specific they were. And you see about the building of the tabernacle, the design by God. And God commanded to use skill labors. That means skill is very much needed by God. And when it's only when we work, it's only when we put our hands into work that God can enable us to develop our skills. If you don't work, our skills are just rusted. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 29. Do you see someone skilled at their work? They will serve before kings. In order to serve before kings, they had to first start working somewhere in a lower place. Somewhere in the streets. Somewhere in some company. And when you put your hands into work and you develop in your skills, God will lift you up and God will place you before kings. And they will not serve before officials of low rank. You see, when we put our hands into work and when we develop our skills and we want to be efficient in our work, we will be be exalted by God. That's God's faithfulness when we work and when we develop our skills. Next, work develops our character. Work develops our character. You and I must understand that by every day, every trial, every problem, we are maturing to the image of his son Jesus Christ so that we may not lack anything but we may be perfect in the Lord. So, Many times it is the work stress, work pressure and the problems that we go through in our workplace that God uses to mold our character, to make us patient and to make us obedient, to make us a servant. It is the workplace pressure that God uses many times which we are unaware of to make us to be the person that God wants us to be. Work gives us a sense of accomplishment. Work gives us a sense of accomplishment. When you do a project in your software company and when that project is completed and uh, when the team rejoices that the project is implemented and the client is very happy about it, there is a celebration. 
there is distribution of sweets and you go for a party outside you go to barbecue nation and and you enjoy the company gives you a treat over there and what is it and for the employees it is a sense of accomplishment that you have worked with your hands you have done teamwork and your work has produced something productive it gives us a sense of accomplishment teachers when you see at the end of your year that your children are graduating from your class to the next class that is an accomplishment when they pass text tests in their lives it gives you a sense of uh, of 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 accomplishment that oh god has used me to impart my skills and talents to someone and they have excelled you see when the, when we dedicate a house when the the work of the contractor and the laborers over there is completed and that gives them and the owner of the house that was tear heading the construction you know he has the owner of the house they have some sense of accomplishment it all happens because of work and we will not find that accomplishment if we sit ho- at home and don't work only when we work we have that sense of doing something and accomplishing something in our life then work gives us a sense of progress it gives us a sense of progress not many of the people who retire as principals start their career as principals they would have started as a lower grade teacher and then they wrote many of examinations and so many hours are put into teaching and then the owner comes and when you get that promotion and when you get that promotion from being a waiter and from being a cleaner boy in a restaurant to be a waiter and to be the manager you know you get and sense of accomplishment and for that we need to work and we get a sense of progress we feel that we are not stagnant in life i was doing that i put my effort into that and god saw my hard work and he has given me a promotion and now i feel that my life is progressing to the next level you understand what i'm telling you it has a lot of meanings why we have to work with our hands then is a good place to develop relationships many believers are like a horse they have something like a horse they don't want to see the believer there and the believer here they are very holy you understand what i'm telling about they just want to focus on the cross and somehow go to work they don't want to say hi to the neighbor when they say hi because their witchcraft will affect them they just don't want to even to say hi and uh, even in the clock room they will not and talk with colleagues and you are so pious that's not how god wants us believers to be in our workplace it is a place to relate to the non believing world and when we relate with the people who are not believers there is a lot of exchange that happens they get to know the true nature of Christ who we are in Christ amen and when you go into our, your workplaces on on monday to saturday you have a lot of opportunities to show the world who Christ is and in the process they get to know who we are and we are the children of the almighty god and also in the process when we build up this good relationship i'm talking about good relationships in workplace we also get a little bit of impartation on habits and cleanliness and world happenings we also it's a give and take relationship and that is why god wants us to work together work so that it is a place to develop relationships see what paul says in colossians chapter 4 verse 5 to 6 be wise in the way you act toward outsiders stock it can put it in the work context make the most of every opportunity to out with outsiders let your conversation be always full of grace seasoned with salt so that you may know how to answer everyone you see develop godly uh, uh, relationships develop good conversations invite take some values from the people of the world and give jesus back to them and god intends us to work so that we can develop good relationships and then moving on one final aspect i'll tell about the gains of work and then i will move on work build self esteem in a person survey says and the psychotherapists say that when a person is not employed there is 20% of the unemployed people fall into depression very soon the moment they lose the job because they lose their self esteem psychotherapist charles allen says self esteem and self worth are closely aligned with working 
Come with me to if Colossians chapter 3 and is verse 22. Colossians, how to be an efficient worker. Colossians chapter 3 and is verse 22. Slaves, obey your earthly masters. Now, you may be telling me, Pastor, we are living in the 21st century, post-modern world. And why are you addressing as a slaves? Amen. By the way, let me talk about whom Apostle Paul wrote about and the biblical condition at Paul's time. In Paul's time, everyone who walked in the streets of Rome, 90 persons, 80 to 90 percent of them were slaves. They were slaves to some rich men or rich Roman citizens and uh, people were slaves, doctors and teachers and, uh, and craftsmen and maids and security people and housekeeping people. All of them people, they used to come to Rome and they were slaves under the rich Roman system. Okay, so, so uh, slavery in those days was not like slavery what we see today it's not like trafficking it's not like uh, it's not like bonded labor they were given the dignity they were given their freedom but only that person were called as a slave belonged to someone if he has to go and work for someone else he has to get a release and uh, the owner has to release him and then only he goes and works for someone else and uh, for an example uh, one of the lowest slaves his work in the household is a person like a maid or an office boy when the gift guest comes into the house this lowest person the person the lowest slave who doesn't have much of education he was given this greatest job he would go and welcome the guests into the house and then he would take a basin of water take away their sandals clean and wash their feet and take a towel and wipe it uh, uh, wipe it dry and put on their sandals and lead them and seat them at the place of dignity in that house. You know, that was the lowest work of a slave. And Paul is addressing to this man as well as to the man who is serving the king as a doctor or a physician or teaching in the school who is under someone and teaching to someone to all the people right from the lowest like a maid or an office boy to the manager or the boss of the company in the present world the Bible is still talking today that you and I are considered slaves or a servant when we work in the places where we are working Colossians chapter 3 verse 22 slaves obey your earthly masters in everything what is the how can we get efficiency at work Point number one, view yourself as a servant. Wherever you are working, view yourself that you are a servant. Be obedient to the person who is working over you. There is only one limitation over here. If your boss or your house or wherever you are working is talking something, asking you to do something to do contrary to the will of God, contrary to your conscience which you know is wrong, then you can speak up and tell that you cannot do that. But in other than contradicting from the word of God or your moral uh, uh, contradiction, you and I are obliged to work for whatever our masters or our boss tells us. That's how... The Bible says we are to work. But when we say no, we cannot work, don't be rude. Don't put God in a very bad position that he is going to judge that person. Do it politely. When they are asking you to do something ungodly, you do it politely. Approach that person in such a way that you can win that person's favor and also change their attitude towards the principles of God. Now turn with me to Matthew's Gospel chapter 28, 20 verse 28. The Son of Man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So Jesus gave us the first example over here. Jesus came as a servant and we as employees in the Lord Jesus Christ, wherever we are working, pastor, you don't know my boss. I know, I don't know your boss. God knows your boss, but God is telling whoever your boss is, you be a servant to that person. Be obedient to that person. Come with me to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 7. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Who being in the very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. Now listen. 
rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness you see jesus is telling bible is telling that jesus came as a servant and now in philippians it's saying that he left his godhead he left his honor his position to be one with god in trinity and he came into this world he took the form of a servant and remember jesus came to do work when he came in his first advent and what was his work to fulfill the task given to him by his master by his father that means he came on a mission when we go to our workplace we are going to fulfill the task given by the workplace as well as by god and we are on a mission in our workplace and when we work let your attitude be like jesus christ who came as a servant and you go yourself as a servant to obey your masters earthly masters and then guess what jesus came and he showed us the example he washed his disciples feet showing servitude what i example what i just told you now he washed his disciples feet and he was doing good to the people and healing them and uh, and working good works even though he knew that they are going to abuse him and accuse him and put him to the cross jesus submitted to the to the lordship of his father and he became a slave and did his work as a slave and that's the example for you and i to uh, to do in our workplace so when you go to work go as a slave this world will not preach this but this is what the bible says come with me to matthew's gospel chapter 23 and his verse 11 the greatest among you will be your servant secondly work as you're working for the lord when you work you're not working for your boss but you're working for the lords colossians 3:22 slaves obey your earthly masters in everything and do it not to live in their eyes on you and to curry their favor but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the lord so when you get uh, if you want to get the most out of your work don't think that you are working and your boss is getting the credit you are working for whom you are working for the lord pastor that's a new theology now what we do is uh, we segment our life we tell pastor monday to friday this is my work saturday is my rest day pleasure day i just want to go out and enjoy sunday is for the lord i will do volunteering in church i will ministry and this is holy no can do you don't don't you want god from monday to friday we segregate things in our life and say this is holy but god is telling no do you want god in your workplace yes you want god in your family yes you want god in your church absolutely yes you want god in your finances absolutely so you cannot differentiate god from your work and your ministry and uh, your family you need god in all places so when you have that concept that when you are working from monday to friday you are working for the lord you will be more effective in your workplace because god sees you working from monday to friday as an act of worship amen your friend your job is your ministry turn to the person sitting next to you and tell your job is your ministry your job is your ministry your job is your offering to god and there are people who are seeing it and we know our job that we are putting it so don't do half hearted job view it as your ministry view it as your offering view that god is with you and you're working for god and that will give you an entirely different perspective when we work in our secular job so when you work for the lord what will happen there won't be stealing what is stealing I've seen people getting pens, pencils, erasers, stationeries home. No lying. You will not go on a vacation and tell that my mother-in-law is sick. When you are working for Jesus, can you lie to God? No. And every company we transfer, our father-in-law dies once and how many times we crucify and bury our father-in-law God only knows. we are not to lie when we work for the lord then 
No wasting time at work. Always looking at the clock, yawning. <laughs> After two o'clock, no work. Come, don't do prayer meetings on work times. Believers, don't sacrifice your work time and do, do a holy prayer over there. God doesn't accept that. If you are a group of such prayer groups, please don't go. Because you are disobeying God's command of work. There is a time of prayer. There is a time of work. There is a time of worship. But if it is after your work hours, if it is in your lunch time, you want to sacrifice your lunch, well and good. No problem. If Or if it is with the permission of your company, well and fine. But don't put the name of the Lord in disgrace just because we are some foolish believers out there. Productivity, high productivity God expects out of us. Thirdly, view Christ as your authority. So, who is your boss sitting over there? Who is your boss? Christ. Somebody say Jesus. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 to 24. Whatever you do, work it with all your heart. I was working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from God as a reward. It is the Lord Christ that you are serving. So, Lord is your authority and Christ is your boss in your workplace. Amen to that church. Amen. Pastor, my boss doesn't do any work. He just sits under his AC camp compartment and he makes me do all the work. Once one man went to buy some parrots. So he was looking for some good parrots. So uh, the parrot seller said, this parrot, the yellow one, is 2,000 rupees. Why so costly? Because it will do the work of a secretary. It will type everything. Whatever you dictate, it will type for you. This parrot. Wow. What about the next parrot? 5,000 rupees. Because it can do even a bigger work. It can type as well as answer your calls and, uh, and manage your appointments. This parrot can do 5,000 rupees. And then he said, what about the third parrot? 10,000 rupees. Why 10,000 rupees? I also don't know why 10,000 rupees, but they both these parrots call him the boss. Let me move forward. Value your colleagues. Value your colleagues. Colossians chapter 4 verse 1. If you have someone under you, value them well. Don't, don't talk disrespectively to them, even though since you are the boss, don't be rough. Let Christ's character of love be seen. A Christian, if you want to be productive in your work, you need to be a person with good respect. And I know, I told you why we should have respect and relationship so that we can gain something and we can uh, tell them about Jesus Christ. And finally, understand your reward comes from God. Your reward comes from God. Colossians 3, 23, 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. So when you, you view your work as a servitude, you, as a servant, and when you see your uh, authority as Christ and your boss as Christ giving you that orders for you and when you value your colleagues, the Bible says that your honor comes from the Lord. Such people, God is quick in honoring. Promotion comes from God. Pastor, you don't know that last time there was an increment and a promotion campaign in our office and there was an interview. I did my best. I deserve everything. And I am the next in line to be promoted. But because of this, because of caste, because of language, because of state, because of partiality, injustice have happened and I have lost my promotion. Don't worry, my dear child of God. You are not working for people. You are working for God. In the right time, no one can stop your promotion. Amen? Praise the Lord. No one can stop your promotion. But there may be times that your company is overlooking the extra times that you are putting in. There may be times when your company, hallelujah, does not see the toughness of that work in spite you don't want to do that project you are pushed to do that project and you're doing that project and you're putting extra time and uh, conferences and telecalls and meetings and work and you have put in a lot of work which is unnoticed by your boss such times God is telling I will reward you and even if they don't pay you I will hold them accountable 